Hello, everybody, and welcome to our daily devotional time. I am Allie Cobb, Director of Children's Youth and Family Ministries here at St. John's United Methodist Church, and welcome to our daily devotional time. Today is Monday, December 12th, 2022, and thank you so much for stopping by and joining me today for our midpoint day together. Um, today, we will be um, reading out of the Upper Room Daily Devotional, sharing in some scripture, prayer, and reflection with one another. Um, so happy Monday to everybody. Um, if you're joining me now live or a little bit later on in the day, if you want to leave a comment below, we always like to know um, which one of our friends have stopped by. And good morning, Linda. It is good to see you as always. Um, I will actually be in the book of John today, so if anybody has their Bible with them and would like to follow along, um, I will be in the book of John out of the Common English Bible. Um, I was looking at um, the devotional for today, and then I also looked at yesterday's devotional because we normally don't do Sundays um, because we're in worship um, and everything. I really liked yesterday's devotional, so I'm actually going to be doing yesterday's devotional today. So we'll be in the book of John. <clears throat> Give everybody a few minutes to hop on on this kind of drizzly Monday. Good morning, Barb and Chris Mueller. It's good to see you as well. Hopefully everybody is having a good start to their Monday. Good morning, Jack. Good to see you as well. Okay, let us begin. John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14 out of the Common English Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word was with God in the beginning. Everything came into being through the Word, and without the Word, nothing came into being. What came into being through the Word was life, and the life was the light for all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself wasn't the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. The true light that shines on all people was coming into the world. The light was in the world, and the world came into being through the light but the world didn't recognize the light. The light came to his own people, and his own people didn't welcome him. But those who did welcome him, those who believed in his name, he authorized to become God's children, born not from blood, nor from human desire, but born from God. The word became flesh and made his home among us. We have seen his glory, glory like that of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. And our focus verse for today, hold on one second, Sage, no thank you, down, no thank you ma'am. Sorry, I have a naughty puppy trying to steal some papers off my desk, hi Sage. Yes, you're you're the one that likes to steal my papers. You wanna say hi to everybody? Okay. Let me say hi, come here sweet girl. Wanna say hi? There you go, wanna say hi? Okay. And our focus verse for today is Luke 2, chapter 11 of the King James Version. Unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Christ the Lord. And our thought for today is, I can find joy in Jesus all year long. And our devotion today comes from Aaron of Connecticut. And these are his thoughts that he is sharing with us today. The title is, Third Sunday of Advent. When I visited New York City during the holiday season, I stopped by the Christmas tree at Rockefeller Center. It was over 70 feet tall and looked spectacular with thousands of lights and bright stars. I was delighted by the sound of family and by families and friends enjoying festivities together. Even strangers jovially greeted one another, one another with a wave while waving hot cocoa or coffee. Christmas time is wonderful, and I enjoy it every year, but if I didn't know the true meaning of Christmas, my joy wouldn't be as my joy would be as temporary as the tree displayed each year at Rockefeller Center. When the holidays are over, the tree is taken away, and so are the special greetings of the season. 
But praise God that the good tidings of great joy given at that first Christmas remain always. My happiness during the holiday season is fleeting, but my joy in Jesus is eternal. The story of Christmas is one of salvation and redemption. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came into the world to remedy us and to restore our relationship with God. And that story keeps us awestruck all year long. And our prayer focus today is those who experience post-Christmas blues. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I know that sometimes I feel a little bit um, of those post-Christmas blues, um, especially kind of in February. January, it's kind of like, <sighs> we, we made it through another season and on to another year. But kind of by like, you know, the end of January, beginning part of February, it's really, really darn cold. Everything is brown outside. Um... And you're just kind of feeling a little ug, um, so to speak, and everything. And that can be a little bit of a letdown, especially, you know, this time of year. I love this time of year for many reasons, but I just feel like in general, everybody is just kind of in a little bit of like an elevated spirit. There's just a little bit more of that goodwill towards man um, and everything. You can just feel it in the air. Um, and it's just so wonderful and special. Um, but as our devotion reminds us today that the joy of Christmas, um, it really is with us all year round. Um, at my house, um, years and years ago, this is before um, we even had the kids and everything, um, I was gifted with the most beautiful, beautiful gift. Um, my mother-in-law actually gave it to me and I had been eyeballing it for years, um, but never gotten it for myself because it was too much money. Um, but at Hallmark, the Willow figurine um, collection and everything, um, and they still do it, um, have a Christmas nativity and everything. And I had looked at it for years um, and admired it and loved it, um, but obviously never bought it for myself because it was so expensive. Um, and one year for Christmas, she gifted me with this beautiful, lovely um, nativity set um, that I had always been kind of, you know, looking at and everything from Willow um, figurine. And for the first year or two, um, I put it out and I displayed it. Um, it was beautiful. And then I would pack it away at the end of Christmas. And then our kids came along, um, more specifically, my daughter came along. And the spot where I usually kept it at was at her level. Um, and she would want to get into it. And it's a very nice set. And I did not want um, our one and a half year old destroying um, this nativity set. I really didn't even really want her to touch it. Um, so I had to find a new spot for it. And so I actually found a new spot for it up a little bit higher in my dining room and or in our formal dining room. And the more I looked at it, I was like, you know, that, you know, cabinet's always been a little empty and that set fits perfectly there. And so that year I decided not to take uh, my nativity set down, didn't pack it away. I wanted to leave it up because it just, it filled the space quite lovely. And even my husband at one point was like, when are you going to pack it away? You know, Christmas is over. And I was like, but I like it there. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, a good reminder, you know, all the time of that first Christmas. Um, so for the past seven years, my nativity set um, has stayed up. It has stayed in my formal dining room. Um, our, actually, our naughty little elf on a shelf was in it yesterday. Um, but yeah, so I've always kept up um, our nativity set in our house for the past um, probably six years, six years now. Um, it stayed up year round, and first thing when you walk in through the front door, you see the nativity set, and it's just that nice kind of little reminder all year round um, of the gift of Jesus, um, born in such a simple way, such a simple manner, um, in a manger, to very humble parents, yet such a light and such a gift to the world. So as we go forth, trying to think of what are ways that we can be lights throughout the year, um, I know that this year, um, a big mission um, that St. John's is doing is Baby Grace. And so many people um, at St. John's have already um, offered to help support um, Baby Grace families for the year. Um, with diapers for $192, I believe, um, supplies a child with diapers for the year. It's kind of that way of keeping that joy alive um, all year round. And today, um, I'm back home now, um, but I actually had a meeting this morning. Um, and my meeting was with Jim, Dale, and Jessica. And if anybody wants to kind of guess to themselves what this meeting was about, um, we were planning Lent. <laughs> Believe it or not, this morning we started planning um, the Lent in the Easter season. Um, and we do this every year. We start planning Lent in the middle of Easter. 
um, which sometimes feels a little daunting that we're already thinking about Easter and everything that um, Lent entails, and we're still not even through Christmas and Christmas Eve service yet. Um, but it is a nice little reminder of even though this gift, this light was given to the world, um, it was for a reason. It was for a purpose. Um, we knew that Jesus's time here on earth was not going to be for a long time. Um, and he knew that and that, you know, to bring as much light and as much joy um, and lessons that he could um, in his time here with us so that we could, you know, continue spreading that good word and that mission. Um, so that's why I'm on today. Jim actually had a meeting after our, our Lenten planning meeting and got caught up in that. So I was able to come back home and do some more work from home today and everything. Um, plus, I really like working from home. I have two golden retrievers, so that's always a nice bit of joy that, you know, sustains us throughout the year. Um, but as you kind of, you know, go forth today and everything, think of what you can do this holiday season. Um, it might not be leaving up your nativity set all year, um, but what are some things that you can do? Um, that kind of help you find the joy all throughout the year, um, not just in, you know, January and February, those post-Christmas blues times, um, but even in like July and August. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, and for the everlasting joy in him. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope you have a great rest of your Monday, and I will see everybody again soon. Take such good care. Bye-bye.